Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed of God to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, lots in my heart that I want to share with you. But before we do that, like we do on this broadcast, can we make demand for our daily bread? Re release your faith right now as we do this. I explained to you, I think on Monday or so, why it's so important that you open your mouth, join me to make this demand. Say with me, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. What does it mean? I receive all the favor I need today. I receive all the protection I need today. I receive, hey, that's exactly what it is. Not just food to eat. <laughs> it's the daily bread. He daily loads us with benefits. And, and David outlined those benefits in Psalm 102. He outlined those benefits. And 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 because God daily loads us with these benefits. Hey, he redeems your life from destruction. He fills your mouth with good things. He forgives your iniquities. He heals your body. Now, if God does this on a daily basis, then we need to prepare our mind to receive it from him. Praise God. And that's why we make this declaration. We make this demand. We ask of him. Because we, it makes us remember to receive from him. David said, do not forget all his benefit. And that doesn't mean, bless the Lord, and don't forget that he's the one that is giving you all this benefit. No, David was literally saying, bless the Lord, and don't forget to receive your benefits. That's exactly what he was saying. Praise God. All right, then. Now, we, we were talking yesterday about the word of God. The word of God. John said there are three that bear record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. So we've talked about the Father. We've talked about the Holy Spirit. And then we began talking about the Word of God. And I said to you yesterday that in the Godhead, the only person that can be seen, the only person that can be seen, we've talked about the Father. We can't see the Father. We'll never see the Father. We talked about the Holy Spirit. We'll never see the Holy Spirit, but we can feel. The Holy Spirit brings, brings us to the realm of um, movement, feeling. You can feel the presence of the Holy Spirit. You can, you can, that's because you're you, okay? And, and, and the Holy Spirit can act, literally move things. I don't know if you get what I mean by that. He can come like wind. He can come like an earthquake. Yes, he does. Okay? And then, he can come silently also. It doesn't also mean that whenever the Holy Spirit is moving, you know, he's, he's around, they must be shaking. No, he can come silently also. But then you can't see a person and say, this is the Holy Spirit. No. The only part of the Godhead that can be seen is the Word of God. Now, when you see the Word of God, like I was explaining to you yesterday, he is the one that appeared in the Garden of Eden. The voice of God came walking in the garden in the cool of the day. I was explaining something to you yesterday that that's the reason when God stood and said, Adam, where are you? Oh, we hid ourselves. We, we, we heard your voice and, and we hid ourselves because we were, we were naked. And then he said, who told you you're naked? Now, was God actually looking for them? Yes, he was. He was. Now, what are you saying? Can't God just stay in heaven? You see, that, you don't, you see, the way God functions, you need to understand that God functions by faith. Yes, God functions by faith. Okay? Because, you know, the mentality a lot of people have about God, it, it's like they fear to kind of bring a limitation to God. It's your mind that tells you that that is a limitation. So, they think that if we say God really was looking for Adam, we tamper with the omniscience of God. So, because, you know, I always say this, the, the problem is always in the definitions, okay? If your definitions is wrong, your understanding totally will be wrong. Yes. For example, now, we, we speak about the omniscience of God. 
Okay. And, and what we see or what we think that means is the all knowing God. Now that's the general in the understanding that was given. Omniscience means the all knowing God. And then now in explaining the all knowing God, we say God knows everything. But the truth about the omniscience of God, the truth about the word omniscience is the God who has all the answers. Can you see? The God who has all the answers. Now, that's the real meaning of the word omniscience. The one who can answer everything. Now, you see why it's 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 okay, you know, when I say it's okay, you see how it translates to the all-knowing God. So, any question you ask this guy, he will answer. He knows everything. Now, you now extend that to mean his eyes are he sees everything. Now, that definition can bring you into a problem with understanding God. Because now you would never want to believe that God was looking for Adam and Eve. <laughs> you understand that? Because like, if he's omniscient, then he should have known before he came that they were hiding. Now, if he knew before they came, and then people even go as far as, you know, God coming and like seeing them hiding something. I see them. Let me just act like I didn't see them. Adam, where are you? Come on. You think, you think God plays pranks? <laughs> Praise God. Now, it's because, I know, man, you know, you know, sometimes you, people think, oh, did God know that Satan was going to rebel? Did God know that Adam was going to sin? There are people who actually believe that God knew Adam and Eve were going to sin. There are people who believe that God knew Satan was going to rebel. Now, you see that idea that you create. It te simply tells you you don't know God. Yes. You read where the Bible says, and God regretted making man. Yeah. You read God regretting making Saul king. You think those things are fake? Now you blame everything on the translators. Please have mercy on them. They tried their best to translate what they can, they, they can picture from, from the old writings, okay? And now if you don't have the Holy Spirit to help you with the proper understanding, you keep blaming translators and then very soon you cancel the whole Bible because after all, we can't trust their writings anymore. So if you base your understanding on this written thing, you will keep making mistakes and mistakes and mistakes and getting into errors. But if you base your understanding on the one Jesus said will guide you into all truth, he's the one you should be asking all your questions. The Holy Spirit is there for you. So when God stood, when, when God stood at the, in the garden now, he says the word of God came walking in the garden. He could have said the word of God spoke. But he said the word of God or, no, or the voice of God came walking in the garden at the cool of the day. Now, well, that phrase will tell you that he's describing something beyond a voice coming from heaven. He's telling you that someone actually came into that garden. Now, because this thing was based on revelation, okay, because nobody was there. It's not like, uh, yeah, there were writings. Please understand this. There were writings. There, there's a strong possibility Adam had written some things about his experience and, and transferred to um, Seth. And Seth transferred, yeah, you know, because Enoch wrote a lot. And, and um, uh, well, Enoch wrote a lot. So Noah had writings, okay? And all those things. So there were, there were, um, oral, you know how we say uh, oral tradition or oral translation of things. So uh, this person told this person, this person told this person, this person told this person. Even that, you know, is at the end of it, they may not be perfectly um, accurate. But that's why in everything you still need the Holy Spirit. As the Holy Spirit, I'll give you the perfect understanding of all these things. It's not your study. Your study will mislead you. Trust me. Trust me, I've studied, 
am studious with the word of God. I am studious. And I, when I tell you, studying alone will, will get you into trouble with yourself. There are people who study, 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 and then they begin to walk in unbelief. Because they begin to find some things. You may not even be able to share this with anybody. But you just begin to find some things that you think they are inconsistent. And the moment you begin to see those kind of things, it begins to diminish your trust in God's word. Yeah. I can show you some. You see, But then, you now know that, hey, this material, though it is true, the writings are not perfect. Why? Because men were involved. But the communication is perfect. Please understand what I'm telling you. The writing is true. What I mean is true. The, the stories are true. There is no lie in the Bible. There's no story that you read about in the Bible that says it never happened. No. The writings are true. The stories are true. But the communication, now, the sorry, the writings are, may not be perfect. But the communication, that which is trying to communicate is truth and it's perfect. But here's where the problem is. The problem is with the writing. So if you judge the writing, you will miss the communication. And you get to what I'm saying? If you judge the writing, you will miss the communication. It's simple logic in human relationship uh, if somebody comes to you now and tells you ha huh? did you see what mr james did yesterday you say oh what did he do he just came into the room and opened the door like that and said where is everybody and, and you're trying to imagine how angry mr james must have been who made him angry now why are you responding that way it's because of the way the, the communicator communicated what happens to you. Now, what are the facts of the story? Now, another person will come and say, Ah, Mr. James came to work yesterday. I say, Oh, really? What time? He came by saying, No, he just came to and he opened it and he was really wondering where everybody was. So he now asked, Where is everybody? Now, the same facts. Are you getting what I'm saying? The same facts. But the interpretation may be different based on who's communicating it. The fact of the matter is Mr. James came. Number two, Mr. James opened the door. Number three, Mr. James asked the question, where is everybody? Now, those are the facts of the story. But then the communication, the writings, now when I mean writings, the, the, the mode of communication, yeah, that's exactly what I want to say, it has spoken or written. The mode of communication have to do with the mood the, the, the understanding of the flow of the, and the flow of the writer, okay? So the first one goes, Mr. James just came, open the door, and he's like, where is everybody? Another one says, Mr. James came, you know, he opened the door, and I, I think because some people were not around, so he was just asking, where is everybody? Your, the way you receive this, both, both stories, one story communicated by two different people. The way you receive it will be based on how it was communicated to you. Now, to find the truth, you may need something else. Okay? Because now, the first impression from the first one who communicated to you might make you think, why should he do that? And then, by the time you see him, you're already agitated. And you get what I'm saying? So, you're ready to stand and say, let, let him ask anything. How? Because of the way it was communicated to you. That's exactly how it is with the Bible. So there are people who have who will tell you, I've read the Bible back cover to cover, and then I've read the 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 Hebrew, I've read the Aramaic, I've read the Greek, and I found out that ah, a lot of things here they are wrong. And so they begin to tell you, look, the Bible is be careful. Be careful. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, who will guide you into all truth? The same thing with preachers. What, 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 what motivates your communication? Is it your studying or the Spirit of God? If a pastor or a preacher is not communicating and you cannot sense that his knowledge is from the Spirit of God, don't trust him. Yes. 
don't trust him. He might be intelligent. Yes. This thing is not intelligent. This is a storybook. It's not fiction. And we have been given access to the one who was moving in the people that this book talks about. He was there from the beginning. He was there throughout all. Now he is the same one that is with us. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And then John said, John said actually that whatever he teaches you, stay with it. So he's the one that if you meditate on the word, he's the one that will tell you. Because now you're reading something and you're like, I don't get why, why is this thing? He's the one that will tell you this is exactly what was going on. I've told you before on this broadcast. That's that's how, you know, I was, I was just studying it and, and you know, when the first miracle when Jesus turned water to wine. I was studying it and, and then I go, what, what's going on? You know, okay, so the wine finished and Mary came up and like, wine has finished. And she went to Jesus, wine has finished. And Jesus, and now the Bible said this was the first miracle that he did. So why was Mary concerned about the wine that is finished? And then she went, went to Jesus to do something consigning it. And, and that, that's when the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, because it was their wedding. Now, I know Makosa Prenakat. You know, sometimes you, you, you don't want it to sound like, oh, because, okay, I've had certain experiences, so um, you should believe me because of those experiences. If the Holy Spirit cannot convince you, I'm sorry, there's nothing that will convince you. Yes, nothing will convince you. Because I can begin to tell you experiences I've had with the Word of God. I can tell you how I've had experiences where I'm transported to ancient times. And I'm, I'm in the room. I'm seeing the conversation that is taking place. I see the expression. I can tell you exactly the mind of the speaker. I've had several of those experiences. Now, I understand that those are experiences of the Spirit of God. Jesus said he will guide you into all truth, okay? So, when he begins to do that, what's the reason? It's not so that you'll make much more money. No, it's like your, so that your faith will be grounded in truth. This thing we're involved in is deeper than what you think. And if you're not well grounded, Satan will sweep you off your feet. So when he comes to reveal himself, he's revealing his, his truth so that you will be well grounded. And so one of such experiences, and then he was, he said, it was their wedding. I'm like, their wedding. And the Lord said, Jesus had sisters and his sister was getting married. I, you know how like, how come nobody ever saw that? How come nobody ever thought about that? Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Because you see, now like, why so why didn't, why didn't they write it clear that, okay, they were, and then the Lord said, because it was John that was writing it. Ah. See, that's why I tell you, you know, sometimes he takes you, because I've already under, I already understood the way John communicates. If you understand the way John communicates in in his writings, he he likes to hide um, his humanity. He likes to hide his person. Because now John will be writing, and he will not say instead of him to say, and John said he would he would say, and the one who leans on him said. I mean, oh God, why didn't he just write, and I said, or and John said. You see, he will take you around that you may not even understand what he's talking about at the end of the day. I think he met Andrew. He met Jesus with Andrew, I guess. But he didn't say, I'm the one that met Jesus with Andrew. Some of you will read it and you will still not see it. So Jesus' sister was getting married. So it was their wedding. Okay. And the reason, I come in a <laughs> and the reason this can be funny but like 
John said, as the whole truth has taught you. I'm not forcing what I believe on you. I'm just giving you light. It will help you. So, so Mary had discussed with Jesus when they were discussing and planning for the wedding. And you know, of course, we want, we want to get you know, this amount of wine. And Jesus wasn't really bothered about that. Now, believe me, I didn't read this from anywhere. And Jesus wasn't so bothered about that, you know. So, you know, more like, I mean, that's not my issue. Okay, so now the wedding is on and then the wine finished. So she came to Jesus more like, I told you, the wine is finished. Okay, and and because sometimes try to picture how Jesus and his brothers lived in the house. So you don't remember he had brothers. <laughs> that was a, who, who, who would kill <laughs> not to accept that Jesus had siblings. I've seen a preacher trying to disprove that, you know, one time. He had siblings, he had, he had brothers, he had sisters. Okay, so the wine is finished, we told you. So more like it's on you. That it, it wasn't a spiritual thing that Mary was doing. She wasn't taxing Jesus of his, his anointing. No, it was a human thing she was trying to do. The wine is finished. So when, when she didn't get a response, she went to the server and said, go and meet him. Anything he tells you to do, do meaning solve this problem. However you're going to solve it. Listen, Jesus could actually have brought out money and say, go buy wine. Or he would have told her, go collect more wine from the wine supplier. But then at that moment, he did. He did what the word of God would do. What did he do? He produced wine from water. See that now? The time is up. Praise <laughs> God. I'll continue tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.